Hello everybody, welcome to AeroBB week number 8. We've got Elliot with his lovely Wood Elves versus Squiggy with his not so lovely Undead. Uh, Squiggy's got two bribes, a wizard and Ali Babad. I'm not really a fan of Ali Babad to be honest, but there you go. He's got Stab, hasn't he, and Sidestep, which is alright versus uh, uh, Wood Elves. Like it's, I guess it's the best he's going to be against Wood Elves. He's a bit faster and he's got Stab. Um, but I mean, it's rough for Squiggy. He's got five aloners. <laughs> five out of twelve players aloners. Elliot's only got two, one loner now, or one journeyman. Obviously, the tree's a loner, but uh, it's funny. He, he said he didn't want a tree, but he lied. He's <laughs> he's bought back the tree. I do love the the offset dacker here with the tree. I think this is. I don't know if Elliot created this. There was a lot of people that started the big guy back here. But um, I do love that uh, Elliot. I think we'll, we'll credit Elliot. We'll call this the Elliot. We don't even need to call it a Dakar anymore. We can call it an Elliot. Uh, very innovative putting the tree over here. Because obviously he's armor 10. It's hard to foul him out. Massive commitment of players to hit him. It's uh, really good. So Elliot gets a completion and uh, Squiggy goes after the tree. I think this is okay to go after the tree one turn, right? Um, knock him over, foul him. I hope he fails his stand up and then abandon him. Or like hit him with a mummy and then abandon him. It's not terrible, I think, to, to hit him turn one. Ideally, though, you'd want to foul as well, wouldn't you? I think if you, I, I kind of hate this GFI because he can't blitz you, and if you if he GFI to here, he could have fouled him with Ali Babad. But um, just GFIing away just stops you like two ding with block instantly next turn anyway. We've got a ragtag pursuit of the uh, elves here. The elves are going to position over at the other side, anticipating a foul on the tree. it off and he passes. <laughs> Outrageous. It does take root. And he gets to 1D blitz, he doesn't blitz. Oh, because he took root so he couldn't blitz. Look, this block could have been with a white, and then it would have been a pow. Bringing in another assist. Got a dirty player here to foul. But uh, I don't like the running away here, right? I think if you're going to foul him, you leave the... If you foul him here, you're giving up your defense, right? <laughs> um, these players aren't defending. So you might as well have, like, two more assists on the tree foul. Because you really want that dirty player on the injury. And as it happened, uh, he did roll enough... get through anyway, but failed and then sent off. But the bribe. 
bribe worked? No, the bribe worked. But I think you should have had two more people in. Or, or not done it, right? Either not done it or get more people in. Now he can try and swing back this turn. Also, he could have, like, assisted with his faster players. Like, assist with this movement 8 guy. If you, And then, like, you know, have a slower player over here. Something like that so that the fast players could reposition back. Because, obviously, Elliot's always going to go over here. Once you put a bunch of players over there fouling. I was watching this live and was of course screaming for this tackle bomber to hit the hit the one turner, which I think is an okay thing for match equity. I think that's an okay move for match equity, but I think for, for winning the drive, I think you have to blitz this catcher probably because he's like you know and try and get stuff in front, try and get stuff back here as much as possible. But uh, I'm not opposed to blitzing this guy, or even this guy, but I hate blitzing this guy. Because it's, um, you can't pile on him, because if you pile on him, you're, you're abandoning your white. And so this guy's okay, right? You're still in front, you could still base up the ball with something or whatever, like, you know, get him a mean on the ball or something, GFIs. Um, but I feel like... He wanted to blitz him, him, one of these three. Blitz him for insane value, blitz him for defenseless, and maybe get something on the ball, or blitz him to try and close off this edge as much as you can, but as it is, the edge is wide open. Yeah, I, I did cast this live, but uh, I thought I'd just keep, you know, for the YouTubes, I thought I'd keep, I'd keep doing the replays. Because live games can, I mean, this didn't, obviously, the DACA makes it a bit shorter, but still. Live games can be somewhat tedious to watch live. It's just the way Blood Bowl is, isn't it? Watching, watching two people think can be a bit much. It's bad enough when you're playing them and you only have to watch one person think, but when, when you're not even playing and it's watching two people think... Go, cheeky Kaz. Casual out bashing from the uh, Wood Elves. And he's got the wizard as well, Squiggy, so like, you know. He doesn't have to give up the defense yet, but that pile, I mean, the blitz, I didn't like the blitz and the pile on is really horrendous. Like, if he hadn't piled on, he could have blitzed this dancer this turn. Now, maybe Elliot wouldn't have exposed the dancer this turn, but um, this guy could have been blitzing the dancer and uh, all sorts of things could have happened. But now he's just going to run back and obviously he'll get tagged by like a rookie lineman. Probably this loner lineman will tag him. Cheeky 3D. But again, you know, positionally, you want to be going after one of the ones in front. But there is a lot of value in hitting the, uh, hitting all the dancers. Like, I understand. I understand wanting to hit a dancer, of course. Who wouldn't want to hit a dancer? Is this guy going to GFI a bit? I wouldn't have hated uh, basing the ball here. I guess maybe you get surf if you do, but even then, like I think it's okay to like make him use his actions surfing you than uh, getting around. I guess it's turn five, and it isn't. So there's a little miscalculation from Elliot here, or. Maybe not miscalculation, maybe just carelessness. And uh, 
I don't know if Squiggy knows about Blood Bowl 2 or not. But there is a very interesting <laughs> a very interesting quirk, house rule, whatever you want to call it, of Blood Bowl 2. <laughs> And uh, no, I counted the squares correctly. I just I just counted from the wrong player. So this looks safe. If you were a square counter, and if you play Blood Bowl, um, if you were to play Blood Bowl um, CRP rule, this looks good, right? He's movement six. One, two, three, four, five, six. GFI, GFI. He can't stab him. But on Blood Bowl 2, he can actually stab him. He can double GFI and then stab for free. And <laughs> no square of movement required. So I don't know if uh, if Elliot, you know, just miscounted. Because, I mean, he put this guy on the wrong side, right? I don't know if Elliot just miscounted or what. Um, but, and I don't know if uh, Squiggy even knew about the, the fact that stab was one less square of movement. But he could have absolutely stabbed the ball carrier here. Um... But yep, yeah. doesn't he doesn't go for that anyway? He doesn't he doesn't go for the uh, the double GFI stab. You know, maybe he just doesn't want to abuse bugs. I I fucking would, especially versus Elliot. But <laughs> you know, some people are like that, aren't they? They, don't, they just don't want him. I think this turn you need to be like GFIing with mummies, right? C come back with everything, pressure this. It's it's not, you know, it's not an auto stall for Elliot. This guy wasn't even tagged. Bring this guy back, bring everybody back as far as you can. And uh, I think like pomming a random lineman is not doing anything for you. Like, he's still in this game, right? Like, the game is not over. It's not over. Don't get me wrong, it's it's a hard game. For Squiggy, but like, this is basically giving up on turn five by doing this pawn. I think. Gets that Kaz though. That Kaz is very nice, really nice. Of course, Elliot is not going to apple it. Elliot is top of the league by a mile, so uh, absolutely no reason for him to uh, power up or anything. Hunt down a ghoul, though, seems a good idea. Yep, I feel that way too. I know, I I, I just wanted to do it live because I just wanted to watch it. So I did it live because I felt like it, but um, I thought I would do the replay for YouTube's. Doesn't take too long, does it? Oh my god, double one. Double one. One, two, three, four, five, six. So again, we've got the double GFI stab as a possibility. <laughs> the dancer snake last time, too. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> So again, he could have stabbed again, right? Um, three dice block this guy, see what happens. And then, depending on what happens, three, four, five, six, double GFI, double stab. Gets the pow. Glorious foul. Nice. Yeah, now these guys are just stuck here doing nothing. Otherwise, if they'd run back last turn, two turns ago, I think, like he did. Uh... And then Elliot, obviously. Obviously, if the game was still in the balance, he wouldn't have made this pass and, and given Squiggy a chance. But it was a double one, right? So if Squiggy had kept the pressure on, and uh, made Elliot do a 1 in 36 dodge, that could have been a, you know, a failed dodge. So, uh, 
Just just goes to show, isn't it? Elliot's don't say it's over. Oh, he can he he can uh, he can chain this guy, and then stab the edge five. You know, if you don't give up, things can happen. There you go. He could have double GFI probably. One, two, three, four, five, GFI. G yeah, he could have double GFI. Oh no, he's moving forward. That is a skeleton. You get like loner skeletons as well, right? It's random whether you get zombies or skeletons. So he benched the skeleton. Oh no, the skeleton regen, didn't it? Regen. Did it? No, I guess it failed regen. He had 12 because he had. He had Alibaba. This skeleton did not regen. So he was playing one skeleton. So the play here is definitely to stand here and stab him. And, uh, and yep, he didn't do it the first time, and he doesn't do it the second time either. Um, you know, like, that's just, it's just obviously correct, right, to, to stab the edge 5. Because now, this is a clear and pick up on 2s instead of, uh, you know, like, being strength 2. And, uh, like, he's got a strength 3 guy to make it easier, and edge 5 to make it super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Rolls a one though. Oh, it's not enough. So there you go. Elliot just about gets the uh, st score done there. Oh, no, it was a little bit closer than it had to be from Elliot. Squiggy's got the uh, got the wizard. To try and uh, stabilize on his own drive, maybe. This was uh... <laughs> this bribe should not have been used, by the way, because if you count his players, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you'd have had to field Ali Babad and get sent off anyway for one turn. So he should have absolutely saved his bribe. Now, obviously, it being a one would have meant that you know fouling it. Wouldn't have, uh, you know, wouldn't have been great saving it for a foul, but it was absolutely, you know, it's just an incorrect decision to uh, categorically incorrect <laughs> to do that. But you know, he's probably, uh, he's probably not the happiest bunny in the world right now, Squeaky. You can, you can forgive him for that, can't you? At the end of the day, his uh, his team is shattered, and uh, he's facing Elliot with Wood Elves. So his, his heart probably isn't in most of the games this season. But you know he, he won he won the he won the top division in season two. So there you go, that's good. Isn't it? And you can argue that the foul here is correct, can't you? Because you've got to get lucky to win. I feel like you want the extra assist if you're doing it. <laughs> and there you go, he gets spotted. I mean, I wouldn't have done it. Not what I would have done, but it's somewhat understandable. But again, you know, the, the, the app, the... Uh, Bribe should have been saved for, sh for sure. Three, six, nine. Nine players <laughs> versus ten for the Woodies. Outbashed by Woodies. Okay, two of them were send offs, but still. <laughs> It's pretty nice having this monster uh, mummy to keep the tree under control. 
just smacking him with block every turn is pretty good. You'll get him down eventually and when you can you can run the fuck away. Oh and this is a horrendous misclick. The old the old camera move I read on the Discord. It was the old camera move misclick. Even puts in a reroll to try and save it as well. Um, yeah, absolutely horrific. Horrific camera move misclick. They, they've got like an option to turn off the camera auto recentering. It just literally does nothing. And you still end up, the camera does random moves when you do things. So yep, yeah, tried to block him. Should have been 3D anyway, I think. But uh, tried to block him and then <laughs> misclick dodged. Horrific. Lack of guard means that Elliot has to just do the 1D here. Otherwise, he could have put a, a guard in there for that 2D and then this 2D. But hey. Is he going for the ball? Could fireball here, couldn't he? I don't hate the fireball here. Three, uh, you know, the one turner. Because even if you get your drive done here, there's a good chance Elliot just scores the one-turner and wins. And there's a fucking Dancer, a Mighty Blow Dancer. And there's another catcher. I think that's a real good... A real good fireball there. And I don't think it's really greedy to hold it for a better chance either, so I think he should have fireballed there. I'm, I'm confident that this should have been a fireball here. Rolls for the pal, lovely. I guess he doesn't pile. Oh, well, definitely not pile on KO. No apple from Elliot. No chances taken. Lovely scatter. So he's actually come out of this amazing, right? Actually amazing. That's probably the best guy. Well, the second best guy who could have caught it, and pretty protected. So a lovely slice of luck for uh, Squiggy here. <laughs> the Edge 5 is just going to roll a million dodges. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> and then finally fails the last one. Wow, makes all the twos and then fails the one three plus. So definitely gets away with it there, Squiggy. I mean, I think I think fireballing there was just correct because it was so horrible. And now you can just like cage here. I think is the place to just cage around here. Can run away from the tree, run the mummies back, and like maybe cage up here. Maybe cage here. One, two, three. Yeah. So cage up here. Use the mummies. Use you know tag the tree out on a zombie. And. Uh, Lone a zombie, tag the tree out. And that's wonderful. But instead we have a based cage. And you may think a based cage with a strength six player is okay. But <laughs> A based cage is a based cage when you've got absolutely zero zero support. I think this was a very bad idea to split the team, right? You have these down players, big, you know, versus elves. Just keep the team in a big blob. Keep the team in a big blob. Move you both in mummies back. Blob up around here. Um, but instead, he just lets you know lets Elliot make loads of two pluses here. And. Uh, you know, if that had been a pow, it'd have been a one day on the ball. Oh, 
Well, you've got a few options, haven't you, here, actually. I, I think coming back and blobbing up around here is the best option. And, uh, you know, he's got, he's got four more turns to score. Five more turns, including this. So plenty of time. There's no need to be very aggressive. Interesting, I would have pushed him up here. Push him up here and then move the mummy to there, right? That's better. Given that I know he's gonna move the ball over here, which I think is just it's all just all kinds of wrong, right? Yeah. What you want is to blob up all your men and make it hard for the elves to do anything. But by 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 making the whole thing loose like this. It's allowing the elves to freely meander around the pitch, which is not really what you want. <laughs> because if you let elves move around the pitch, they'll roll a bunch of wands. Well, twos, they won't roll a bunch of wands. As long as they don't roll a bunch of wands, they'll roll a bunch of twos and get to hit you. And here we go, lots of twos. <laughs> I did believe it or not, Sambo Simon, I have learned absolutely nothing from Blood Bowl tactics. Yes, that's the that's the problem and now now he's got you know he's got this isolated team where his guys can get tagged off and be rendered useless and where the elves can do anything they want but you know now saving the wizard pays off in a, in a way by getting this hit but uh it's still not great not in a great spot it just just really a couple of bad turns there from squiggy and if he hadn't had those bad turns you know, he'd be looking pretty favoured to uh, lose 2-1 because of this guy. <laughs> but, but, you know. <laughs> exactly, Squirrel. Exactly. Exactly. I'm very proud of that fact. <laughs> Nobody has learned less from other people. Jimmy Fantastic. Yep. Correct. Gets the pow. Yeah, look, just all these guys have got two pluses out, haven't they? Which is the, uh, which is a problem. No way to control them. Hey, he makes a slight boo-boo here. As he realises this will be a one day, so then has to run back. <laughs> sewn up doesn't it but um you know it just goes to show doesn't it like I think it was well played by Eliod but um you know if uh if Squiggy had defended harder you know maybe he would have got the dice to stop to stop Eliod right with that double one and uh getting to hit the ball and stuff even even defending how he did he had that he had the chance to stab the ball um and then on his offense if he had been more patient and and you know kept his kept his team all together then um 
you know, as one unit or blob is the technical term if you look it up on Blood Bowl Tactics. Uh, yeah, but instead, he didn't. <laughs> And that just allowed Elio to use the mobility of his elves. Whereas if he's if he's in a big blob, then the the elves' mobility is rendered kind of useless, right? So then what does Elio just do? He probably like elf screens, and then you spend a turn two trying to get forward, and then maybe he's a desperate push, and maybe you still don't score. But oh, I just like blobbing up there, and there you go. He gets the hand after this guy, who fucks the fuck off. Tree, ground doesn't have mighty blow. He's got sidestep. I was thinking you could uh, you could blitz this guy into here to get an extra hit, but it doesn't work. Doesn't even foul. Diced in a game I wasn't in. <laughs> oh, look at that. Elliot can make two plus handoffs, can't he? Flippin' Elliot. Elliot can make two plus handoffs. Doesn't even foul the tree. Outrageous. Outrageous compassion there from Squiggy. <laughs> Imagine not remorselessly fouling Elliot's team. But yeah, that was. It was. I thought that was really interesting. That because I thought even against all of the odds there, um, you know, if Squiggy had, if Squiggy, you know, had had the mental fortitude, inclination whatever you want to like really fight as hard as he could there, he could have got something out of it again. You know, maybe even won, right? Maybe outright won that game he could have done. But it is of course completely understandable for him to be somewhat tapped out of this season. Uh due to his team being absolutely shit on. <laughs> so there you go. Uh congrats to Elliot, commiserations to Squiggy. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.